for Lord Boothby and a thousand well wishes outside Caxton Hall, it was the wedding of the year. The day he married. In 1967, Boothby, still a household name, married for a second time. His bride, a beautiful Sardinian, Wanda Senna. To his friends in the underworld, it was a clear message. He wanted out. Wanda seems to have tamed the Boothby temperament. Before the honeymoon in Scotland, she said, he's a very good boy now. The unlikely friendships, which had once seemed so promising, were disintegrating. But the story wasn't over. There would be very different outcomes to the lives of the men in the photographs. A few years later, Leslie Holt met a Harley Street doctor called Gordon Kells, for whom his friend Ricky Greeley was then working as a secretary. Kells soon took to Holt. He fancied Leslie. I mean, he told me he fancied Leslie. I mean, every time Leslie used to come to the surgery, he'd say, don't forget to get your black stockings, I've got mine ready, and I've got my leather skirt. All that kind of banter went on between them. But there was another side to their relationship. The doctor was procuring clients for Leslie to um, steal from. And Leslie would rob them, and the doctor and him would share the proceeds. It was a very sort of lucrative setup they had. But in 1979, something began to go wrong with Kells and Holt's setup. Kells kept phoning me up and nearly every day. Is Leslie in town? Is Leslie in town? I said, no. Anyway, when he, he, he phoned up one day, he said, is Leslie about? I said, yes. He, he said, tell him not to come round. The place is surrounded with police. At this time, Leslie Holt was being troubled by a verruca on his foot. Kells operated to remove it. He gave Holt a massive overdose of anaesthetic. Holt was rushed into hospital. At the hospital, in the waiting room, this doctor came into the room and he said, I'm very sorry, your brother died. Pneumonia went across him and it couldn't save him. <laughs> and he said, would you like to stay here because you've been all on your own? <laughs> I said, no, I've got to go home to my dad and tell him what's happened. Kells was tried for unlawful killing, but despite the overwhelming medical evidence, was acquitted. No evidence about his real relationship with Holt and any possible motive for wanting rid of him was put before the jury. The jury knew nothing of their friendship or the criminal things that were going on between them because the police stated that the doctor would go to prison on the medical evidence alone. And he, he walked a free man because of that. Gordon Kells died early this year from a heart attack. He meant to kill him, I'm sure of it. I know he killed him, I don't think I know. There was also, shortly before the Crays were arrested in 1968, an unresolved end to the known life of mad Teddy Smith. Suddenly, Teddy Smith disappeared. And the, the very sinister aspect about it all is that although at the end uh, of the case I'd got some of the, the, the major movers in the, in the Cray gang to come on my side to give Queen's evidence and so on, and they were very, very carefully uh, enlisting every possible uh, complaint they'd got against the Crays, none of them knew what had happened to Teddy Smith. Well, there's rumours going round all over that he, he, they'd had a fallout over a boy and Reg killed him or Ronnie killed him or one of the firm kill, killed him. I find, find that very hard to believe. Did you ever learn anything from the craze about what No, nothing. Never, never been mentioned. Not discussed. He's never discussed. The law finally caught up with the Cray twins in 1969. They were each sent to prison for a minimum of 30 years for murder. Ronnie Cray was sanguine about his fate. He was there in Durham jail, determined to do his, his bird well. And when I went to see him, he said, when it's all over and I come out of prison, he said, I'll take you off on a trip round the world and we'll have a couple of boys. I said, but Ronnie, I don't like boys. He said, oh, he said, by then you will. Boys is best. Ronnie Cray died in Broadmoor two years ago. Bob Boothby retreated into respectable old age, a grand old man of the 20th century provocative to the end. When he was well into his 80s, I used to go and see him in his flat, where he was living on whiskey and Compline, or so he said. 
And I remember one time, just before his death, I asked him how he was, and he said, from the age of 75, euthanasia ought to be voluntary, but at 85, it ought to be compulsory. Bob Boothby was the great political entertainer. His exotic private life was his affair, but when it came to Ronnie Cray, Boothby's lies caused public harm. Without the secrecy over the men in the photographs, the Crays would have been hunted down earlier, and their victims might have lived to tell the tale. Secret History returns at the same time next Monday with a look at the sinking of the HMS Glorious.